Hello, NCM 102 class. So, today we'll be discussing the last topic for this course, finally, that is the future directions for client education. Now, tomorrow holds a lot of possibilities because we're talking about future, right? So, this holds true to everyone as well as to healthcare and client education. With the advent of growing technology, globalization, and changing course of living, education and healthcare is also expected to go an extra mile from what it was before and that is very evident when we experienced COVID-19 pandemic. New and enhanced health education for clients and patients are waiting to be realized and applied. Moreover, enhanced dissemination of teachings and information are growing through computer-based instructions, which we have discussed in the uh, before in, in the previous weeks, and application of recorded programs. No? So there are evidence of shifts, so shifting from one method to a new method in terms of client education. And this today we will our aim is for us to understand clearly what are the directions that are expected in terms of educating our client in terms of the approach of our healthcare system, as well as we will be touching the Filipino culture and how would that affect no, our healthcare decisions in the future. And of course, the advancement of technology that would also have an impact on our healthcare delivery. First, is there would be expected, or it is expected for us to have a greater emphasis on wellness. No, so a shift from a care system that focuses on illness to one that focuses on wellness. So wellness of an individual will be put into much focus and attention through careful and convenient tracking and monitoring of individuals' habits, daily activities, and lifestyle. So it is um, foreseen that the approach in healthcare system is more of wellness rather than cure. No, It's more of activities that directs towards wellness. And through this, we do have strategies for us to be able to monitor and through, and, be, uh, and we can do that through tracking, no? monitoring of the community assigned to a particular healthcare provider, no? individuals' habits, no? change of lifestyle. So that is what our direction will be no? in the healthcare system. In addition, nurses and health educators will have more opportunities to apply empirical, aesthetic expressions, no creativity, personal ethical wellness knowledge to their patients. So because of technology that will help us improve organize all our daily activities now we all have more time to speak to our clients more time to what um, improve our health teachings more on focusing on wellness. So let's say, for example, a 60-year-old woman presents to the emergency room for a fall. No, She identified that she had been having some leg edema and not wearing her normal shoes. So, was walking, so she was walking in a slippery type shoe and slipped. The acute episode is treated by obtaining an x-ray film to rule out fracture and a cardiac review to determine cause of the edema. So how do we relate this to wellness? perspective no so would go further so if you say wellness um, perspective you would go further and consider what are the possible risks for future falls so you will be able to reassess the and take a look at the risks of possible um, having this incident again no? so a gate analysis would be done screening for osteoporosis would be arranged for and a plan for or plan to prevent or reduce risk to prevent subsequent falls and potential fractures would be what implemented with possible referral to a matter of different organizations or programs that would support the patient with strategies to reduce the risk for fall and increase the strength and balance so you're more focusing on the wellness so the key is that instead of simply asking what is wrong here or what is wrong now, the focus is on the immediate episode that brought the person to the clinic or hospital. The nurse would also ask what happened that the person need this level of care. 
what could or should have been done to better manage a person's health or prevent this episode? What needs to be done to prevent a recurrence or a worsening of presenting issues? So we're more of the prevention, no? prevention aspects. So that's where the role of the nurse would come in in terms of coordinating a giver of information which I also have supplemented in the in week 13 topic. Another um, necessary characteristics of a transformed healthcare system is the unwavering focus on the patient and family. So patient and family-centered care rather than provider of centric care is essential for patients and family in terms of giving them appropriate responsibilities as well for self-management at home or in the hospital. This is where we acknowledge that patients know themselves best. We realize that quality care can only be achieved when we integrate patients and family into decision making and care. No, so do you agree with that? So family must always be there as part of the healthcare team. No, focus on what is important to the patient. So when you say patient-centered approach, we focus on what is important for the patient, what matters for the patient. No, what matters for the patient. So engaging the patient in shared decision making and shared care plan. So again, they are not objects of care that just that are just waiting for treatments, but they are also there as part of the decision making or makers, no? Motivational interviewing and action planning as a strategy to assist our patients. Next up is it is also expected that there would be increased third party reimbursement. So the reality, you know, is that illnesses can strike anytime and hospital cost is always a concern, particularly if you pay out from your pocket and that if that is only your option of paying, that it would be very hard for all our patients, no? Fortunately, we do have our third-party reimbursements in the hospital. So third-party reimbursement is expected to increase as the cost-benefit ratios establish the cost effectiveness of customer education. So this helps in accomplishment of payment for home health and allow educators and social workers to work and assist their clients com commendably. This will also organize the flow of money and payment proves that future directions for client education just gets better and better. So here in the Philippines, no, we do have an assistance, no, increase in reimbursement assistance is providing enough finances to run the healthcare organization. So this ensures that there is enough funding to take care of short-term healthcare expenses and also long-term expenses. So we have the field health now so fortunately we have the filipino field health this is around this is um um, created not to provide healthcare benefits to all members. As a member, you and your dependents are entitled to health and hospitalization subsidy. So this implies that the care provision will not be undermined due to the lack of resources. So we do have the Philippine or the Phil Health. This is a government-owned and controlled corporation. Its main goal is to ensure the health of every Filipino through social health insurance regardless of social status, whether you're poor, you're rich, you're young, you're old, you're sick or you're healthy, or if you're working or you're jobless. No? So PhilHealth is a mandatory national health insurance program for employed Filipinos also, including OFWs. It provides basic health care services such as hospital visits, charges, day procedures, and professional fees. So this covers professional fees of your doctors, the procedures that you undergo to the hospital visits that you do. Okay. Let's move on to the next topic, which is the Filipino cultural characteristics and healthcare beliefs and practices in health education. So when you say culture, so when you say culture that is totally, totality rather, of socially transmitted, meaning you can pass it on patterns of thoughts, values, meanings, and beliefs. So if you can still recall our culture in the Philippines, we were what? 
colonized by different um, nationalities the Spaniards, the Americans, we have the Japanese. That's why these are what socially transmitted patterns of thoughts and values and beliefs. Up until today, up until this date, we are still bringing those practices in our culture. This will also include no culture, will also include the customs, the arts, no social institutions and achievements no, of a particular nation or people. No? So it is very vital for us to understand why is culture and health important no, for us to understand the connection, no, the coordination of both terms. Because no? this is what impacts the worldview of a person or individual in terms of decision making in the healthcare education or in the healthcare practice. So when we say worldview, our own thoughts, our own practices, that's what we believe in. So that is our worldview. So let me ask you, what is your worldview in terms of health? No? What do you believe in terms of health? So we will now be tackling that in the next couple of so let's just refresh and go back to what is the basic logic of health and illness. So the basic logic of health and illness consists of prevention, that is avoiding appropriate behavior that leads to any imbalances like illnesses or sickness and curing, no? Curing is more of basic things, so curing to restore the balance or for you to be able to be cured from any disease or illness. So that's more of we want to prevent and we want to restore our health if ever there would be imbalances. No? So what are the theories of illness? So physical and mental health and illness are viewed holistically as an equilibrium model. So that's what we really know about this. No? In contrast, other explanatory models may include mystical, personalistic, and naturalistic causes of illness or disease. So most likely beyond science, that beyond the explanation of science, no? So in terms of the belief of the Filipino culture, um, this is really, um, we really have the the background in the Filipino culture. We, we really believe in the mystical causes and also the personalistic causes no, of illnesses. So let's go now, how do we define mystical causes? So mystical causes often attributed to experiences or behaviors such as ancestral retribution or unfinished tasks or obligation. So some believe that the soul goes out from the body and wanders around. This is what we call the bangungot or that having nightmares after a heavy meal may result in death. So we commonly believe that we do not sleep when your stomach is full. Do you agree? This is a common belief in the Philippines that is almost a doctrine. No? According to superstitions, bangungot happens when a person sleeps on a full stomach. It's an old wives tale claiming that overeating just before going to bed might cause a person to rise and moan. Bangon at ungol, where bangungot got its name. No? Have difficulty breathing while sleeping or unfortunate cases mysteriously die in their sleep. Many Filipinos believe that if someone mysteriously dies in their sleep, they have had a nightmare so bad that it led to a bangungot. They are unaware or they are aware of this belief and are often frightened at the possibility of experiencing it. Well, bangungot is not just exclusive no, to Philippines. Other Asian countries have names for this peculiar phenomenon as well. Like Thailand, they call it Laitai. In Japan, they call it Pokuri. No? So, however, there's a one medical condition which we suspect of causing death in Bangungot's case, which is the acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. So that is the explanation in the science um, perspective, no? the acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. No? 
This is the inflammation of our pancreas. No? Acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis in, is an inflammation of our pancreas. It often occurs suddenly and quickly and in some cases could be fatal. Next up, the personalistic causes. These are associated with social punishment or retribution from supernatural forces such as evil spirits, witch, mangagamud, or sorcerer, sorcerer, mangkukulam. No? The forces cast their spells on the people if they are jealous or feel dislike. Witch doctors, we have the her herbolario. Or priests are asked to counteract and cast out these evil forces through the use of prayers, incantations, medical herb herbs, and plants. No? For protection, the healer may recommend the use of holy oils or wearing what amul amulets or anting anting. No? So, do you believe in this? If that there is really what we call the evil spirits, no supernatural forces that would affect the health of an individual through mangkukulam, no. So others would really say the others who have experienced this. Maybe this is a good research, put no. This is a good a title for research, no. That you interview those who experience kulam at first hand, no. I do have friends who share thoughts on this that they were able to really experience this. Um, though we cannot really explain this particular scenario, sometimes their experience, if even they, if even if their relative was able to go to a hospital, there were no treatment, there were no findings, but their relative got sick, very very sick, and then died. That's the worst thing that would happen. But then again, we don't know, no, because we cannot. What we know is those that has been explained by science database. No? Next up is the naturalistic causes include a host of factors ranging from natural causes or forces, thunder, lightning, lightning or any catastrophes, or even excess stress, food and drug incompatibility, infection or familial susceptibility or through the genes. Now those are the natural causes, naturalistic causes of any illnesses or disease. Let's move now to the Filipino health perception. So what do Filipino really perceive in terms of health? No? So for example, we have the following. No? Rapid shifts from hot to cold would lead to illness. So the hot and cold, there's what we call the hot and cold syndrome. No? Hot and cold syndrome or what we term as pasmo or pasma. So the interaction of hot and cold elements is the basis of the pasma concept. No? Pasma is roughly defined as an exposure illness which occurs when a condition considered to be hot is attacked by a cold element and vice versa. That's why if you if you iron your clothes, no, it, you touch the your your iron for a longer period of time that you're not really allowed to wash your hands with water cold water or water because that will um, produce illness no this is what we call the pasma or pasmo that's what the Filipinos believe we also believe a warm environment is essential for maintaining optimal health no so in the individual's homeostasis it is attended by a balance of between hot and cold elements let's say for example in giving birth now in giving birth it is believed that in giving birth it leaves the woman with open pores making the mother susceptible to the entrance of like say hangin or lamig or bugnaw no hangin which are elements of cold this manifestation will depend on where the cold settles in the woman's body and results of this is pasma or pasmo or palpable knots in muscles or subcutaneous tissue so have you heard about this with your parents no or or anyone at home that if they will have their massage at the back there's a what there's a hanging quote and quote um there's a cold element no that is settling in the subcutaneous tissues tissues that could cause what discomfort no to the person another thing cold drinks or cooling food should be avoided in the morning so that's another belief because um, they believe that um, drinking cold or cool food in the morning would build up gas in the stomach. No? Then that should be, it's better to drink hot 
um, drinks or food in the morning. So an overheated body is vulnerable to disease. A heated body can get shocked. So that's the same concept with the hot and cold concept. No? So when cool, cooled quickly, it can cause illness. And we have the layer of fat maintains warmth, protecting the body's vital energy. An imbalance from worry and overwork would create stress and illness. No? Those are our perceptions of health. Next, we move to the common Filipino cultural beliefs. Filipino word depicting our cultural beliefs. No? So what are these? We have the first is namamana, English translation of inheritance. We also have lihi, conception or maternal cravings. Pasma, which is the hot and cold syndrome. Uh, sumpa and gaba, which is a curse. No? First, we go to namamana. This, are, is, this means acquiring a behavioral or disease trait from a parent or from a relative. So we say, na, napamana sa imo, na siya nasakit. So meaning that is what? Um, based on the genetic um, characteristic of your parents. So let's say, for example, if your parent has cancer or diabetes, you can also acquire these diseases. No, that's a term, inheritance or namamana. No, it is believed that when a relative has, the, has this condition, it is possible that this will also be passed on to the younger generation. So the passing on of a trait to the younger generation means namamana. So in say conception or maternal craving or lihi. So lihi is or during the lihi period, this is also referring the first trimester of pregnancy. The pregnant woman experiences a number of physical discomforts, including feelings of dizziness, nausea, irritability, and general weakening of the body. So it is also during this time that the pregnant woman develops intense craving for certain foods and in intense liking for certain objects. No? So it is believed that an offspring will take the features of the food that the mother has craved for while she is still in the lihi period. No? So let's say, for example, um, the mother kept on eating what? Um, guava. So what is the characteristics of the guava? Whitish or whatsoever. White is the inside of the color of the, the fruit. No, maybe that's why you are also a white, you also have a white skin um, so that you acquire the characteristics of that food or object. No. So we have the hot and cold syndrome, which is the PASMA, the interaction of hot and cold elements. This is the basis for the concept of what you call the PASMA. And then the SUMPA and GABA. The curse or sumpa and gaba. So the curse is inflicted by a human being. In contrast, gaba is a curse inflicted by a divine being and it is usually God. No, This is inflicted to a person because he, and sh he or she committed a social sin. So the impact of sumpa and gaba is shared with the whole family and may be extended to the next generation. To end its effect, the inflicted person and the family members may pursue ritualistic activities and wear anting-anting or amulets to be for them to be protected. So next up, what are the different coping styles of Filipinos, no? specifically elder Filipinos in times of illness or crisis? So we do have the patience and endurance in Bisaya. We have the Tiaga or Tagalog rather, Tiaga, the ability to tolerate uncertain situation. It's really true, no? It, based on my experience, like older um, clients no? or patients would tend to what? Um, would not really go to any medical experts rather they just sacrifice or they will just tend to um, put the the checkups aside because they want to observe themselves first no so endurance no they are they endure the pain and then they're afraid sometimes to go to the hospital lakas ng loob or being respectful and honest with oneself no being flexible lakas ng loob so those are another common coping style that we have we have that what 
strength in ourselves, honest with oneself and being respectful of ourselves. We have the lakas ng loob, no? So, sometimes if we face um, challenges, no, we, we tend to say, kaya mo yan, lakas ng loob lang, no? So, we can do it, no? The third one is, tatawanan ang problema or humor. No? So that's another characteristic of Filipino culture that even other nationalities would really appreciate us no? in terms of not just sickness but let's say catastrophe, uh, flood or earthquake or fire. We tend to just smile even during the pandemic, the COVID-19. Instead of what? Um, focusing on 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 the on the incidents like let's say for example in the western countries diba, there's an increased rate of violence domestic violence or they're just like depressed no but filipinos nag tiktok filipinos they they cook food they cook food they do vlogs they they sell food through online we are really creative you know as filipino individual bahala na fatalistic resignation no the view that illness and suffering are the unavoidable we accept that it's unavoidable and predestined will of god in which the patient family members and even the physician should not interfere meaning bahala na no so then we we just offer everything to god no because that is already predestined and that is the will of god pakikisama no this is really what filipino traits uh is really um, known for no conceding to the wishes of the collective group no to maintain harmony so you tend to what go with the flow you you tend to understand the characteristics of different people because you will be what um you want to maintain the harmony of the group no so you don't want any trouble with with uh, with the different um people that you work with so next up we have the spiritual life and religiosity so what are our practices no so we attend mass praying the rosary and novena so if somebody is sick we try to offer no prayer during mass no express devotion to saints and the virgin mother receiving sacraments and holy communion reconciliation anointing of the sick no so we request a priest to go to the bedside of the patient and anoint the sick observe religious holidays and rituals going into pil pilgrimages so next up our next and final topic for the future directions of healthcare is the new technologies, new settings, and environmental linkages. So now let's move to the next um, topic that we'll be discussing, the new technologies, new settings, and environmental linkages. So with the advent of technology, before we just know that surgeons do remove what? A particular organ or tissue in our body using their bare hand but now robots can do it or may do it or has have done it yeah so um one of the directions of healthcare is really the use of virtual and augmented reality so with this advanced technology and its ability to generate the real life scenarios in the virtual environment online healthcare students can get a fully immersive training experience before they enter a hands-on patient scenario such as surgical residency in med school no or the same thing with nursing right so in addition to the hands-on skill development students in the vr and ar environment can also work on developing mental agility and decision making skills that were previously only learned while if you will be on the job training no? especially if you do be in a position of trauma or emergency room situation so virtual and augmented reality would really help us be immersed in the real scenarios augmented reality um an example for that let's say for example there's an ikea app you know what's ikea ikea is a part or that's a store that sells um um what do you call this furnitures at home so if you want to see how a sofa will look in your own room you can you can use the augmented reality so there's an application for that no Radioverter. 
defibrillator that is the implantable cardioverter defibrillator or ICD. I have a patient which I cared for when uh, when I was still a staff. I I was with him in the Philippine Heart Center where the procedure was done no, in the Philippine Heart Center in Manila. So they inserted an implantable cardioverter defibrillator anytime if anytime your heart stops beating, the ICD will just pump electrical current to bring back your heart on its regular function so just imagine that there's no need for you to bring the 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 very the the big um defibrillator with you and then give the shock no there, there's no need for you to do that because it's already implanted in the body of the patient so just imagine how high tech now but this costs a lot this costs million no next we have the digital health and telehealth so when you say digital health and telehealth, we experienced that during COVID, right? This is just about everything in healthcare practices made possible by remote or long distance technologies. So this includes remote clinical health care, health administration operations, public health operations, and others. Now, all of these components of telehealth are expanding with the movement of and of technology and the convenience of being able to serve students who have scheduling challenges or geographic barriers. So if you're far from your doctor, um, you can do the teleconsult, no telehealth consultation. So this really happened or we were able to practice this during the pandemic. So there's also the positive um, impact of pandemic, right? We're able to use the resources that we can do in order to reach out our patients who cannot go to inside the hospital because they are co they have comorbidities that's unsafe for them to go that's why their checkups will be through teleconsultation or telehealth robotics no this is not new actually to other countries but in the philippines we're not yet um using the robots no so they actually name robots they have their unique name so when you say robots in healthcare, this refers to certain types of new technologies that exist in areas like surgery, rehabilitation, sterilization and cleaning, voice recognition, and much more to assist healthcare workers with daily tasks and patient care. So we could categorize robots into different categories, actually. We can name a surgical robot, a care robot, a hospital robot, no? So I've seen lots of this, no? So there are different roles that they gave out to robots, like somebody just to clean the area, someone who just picks up the laboratory specimens, someone who could just uh, pick up the medication. So you really know there's no need for you to have more manpower because robots can actually do these tasks no but still the care of the patient is really still vital but hopefully we're not the robots eventually no so we must have that compassionate care for us to what delineate ourselves as the caring individual rather than the robots no so we must still be able to give those um compassionate tlc to our patients the AIs, artificial intelligence. So when you say AIs, it is becoming increasingly popular and widespread in the healthcare field. So most standard applications for this technology involves patients' diagnosis, the development of patient treatment plans, various activities that we could give like patient engagements, and so on and so forth. So what would be the difference between the robot and artificial intelligence? No? So AI is the ability of a computer or a robot controlled by a computer to do tasks that are usually done by humans because they require human intelligence and discernment. So one thing is AI is one of the emerging technologies which tries to simulate human reasoning. Human reasoning, no? So meaning, this is the ability of a computer program to learn and think. So just imagine that they can learn, they can think. They simulate the characteristics of humans. And they are really helpful in terms of what? Redu reducing human error because to err is human. No? Take risks instead of humans. So instead, we are the ones taking the risks. They can take the risks 
for us. They can function no? 24-7, they don't get tired. And then helping in repetitive jobs. No? They can do repetitive movements, actions, they don't get tired. And they could decide faster than humans because they already have embedded that characteristics in themselves. So just imagine how, how important or how significant this um, discovery is, the AIs. But this is very expensive, very expensive. But that is one of the direction of our health education. So with that, thank you so much for listening and have a good day.